In order to properly prepare yourself for the zombie apocalypse, you need to be aware of different types of zombies that could be roaming around your hideout when the time finally comes. Many of the ones we're about to look at are actually on the zombie apocalypse document used by the U.S. Strategic Command for preparation. From highly contagious pathogenic zombies to evil magic zombies, here are 10 different types of zombies. We understood you guys want more videos about zombies, so here's the longest video on American Eye yet. Number 10. The Generic Zombie There are many kinds of zombies out there, and for most of our videos, we explain how to protect yourself against generic zombies. These are the kinds you see in most films or TV shows which are disoriented, mindless, and aggressive towards non-zombies. The way they become zombies isn't always clear, but they are there. They tend to attack survivors in groups, normally grunting or moaning. The generic zombie lacks any emotions, doesn't want to be your friend, and can't be killed unless you destroy the brain. They are very sensitive to noise and will tend to move in the direction of the last thing they heard. There's basically two types of generic zombies, the walkers and the runners. Walkers attack in large hordes, can swim, and kind of stumble around like a drunk person. These are the kinds of zombies you see in the Walking Dead TV show. The other type of generic zombie is the runner who has the capability of running. The runners are much more dangerous, and some have the ability to sprint when they detect a moving survivor. You can often disable a runner by injuring their legs with a blunt weapon like a baseball bat or severing them with a sword, for example. They'll still be alive, however, and they'll be given a new name known as the Ankle Biters. Since they're so low to the ground, you have to keep an eye out for these and just hope that they don't latch on to your ankles. The only way to get infected by generic zombies is if they bite you. Elite James commented that he would be worried about generic running zombies in our best pets to survive the zombie apocalypse video. We totally agree, but those ankle biter zombies can be extremely sneaky as well, so watch out. Number 9. Pathogenic Zombies With so many different types of bacteria, viruses, and fungi out there, pathogenic zombies seem like one of the most realistic kinds you need to watch out for. Many different governments have created biological weapons which may end up in the wrong hands somehow. Who knows exactly what they've created or when a killer zombie virus might end up spreading. This type of zombie was listed on the U.S. Strategic Command document Con Plan 8888 and it discusses different ways to handle the zombie threat. This type of zombie will most likely be filled with various insects and also, and just by them walking near you, it could trigger you to become infected as well. This makes it a little more difficult to prepare for, but something like a gas mask and a biohazard suit would be a good start. Something such as a long-handled weapon like a spear or fire axe could work properly for defending yourself. This type of infection will most likely spread quite rapidly across heavily populated areas. It's assumed that once a human becomes a zombie, there's no way to turn them back to normal and it'll already be too late. Any human casualty will become a zombie in this case. The only way to be 100% sure that the zombie is dead would be to completely burn it until it's reduced to ashes. This makes things like Molotov cocktails and flamethrowers even more useful. Just don't light yourself on fire. Pathogenic zombies will feel no pain, so traditional riot countermeasures will not be effective. The government has actually improvised a plan, which includes bombing strikes, in order to nullify the threat. Number 8. Radiation Zombies a radiation zombie, or RZ, is described by the U.S. Strategic Command as being a zombie life form that is created after an organism is infected by an extreme dosage of particle or electromagnetic radiation. We are exposed to electromagnetic radiation every day from things like microwaves, x-rays, and even our cell phones. But what happens if humans are somehow exposed to too much radiation and it results in zombie-like creatures roaming the Earth? This type of zombie is also possible in the case of a nuclear meltdown like we saw with Chernobyl, or even after the case of a nuclear apocalypse. Assuming that the radiation hasn't affected their mobility, radioactive zombies could be one of the most dangerous out there. They contaminate everything they touch, destroying water sources, food supplies, and farmable land. How do you prepare yourself for an outbreak of radioactive zombies? 
The first step you should consider taking is purchasing potassium iodine tablets. This type of pill will help prevent thyroid cancer from radiation, but it's simply not a cure. For this type of zombie, it's best to use long-range weapons such as bows, throwing axes, and silenced firearms. Be extremely careful with physical contact with a radiation zombie and avoid any nuclear reactors. This scenario requires a lot of mobility and training with ranged weapons. Number 7. Vegetarian Zombies It's unpredictable how some different viruses or pathogens might affect the human brain, so the U.S. Strategic Command has also included vegetarian zombies into their defense strategy as well. If you've ever played the game Plants vs. Zombies, you might be familiar with this kind. Plant zombies aren't a direct threat to humans and only eat plant life. While vegetarian zombies don't attack people or animals, they are capable of consuming all plant life in front of them. This could lead to our crops being wiped out and an eventual famine that will strike. These zombies will be found roaming through tall fields of corn in the Midwest, completely devouring everything like a bunch of starving locusts. This could also lead to deforestation and severe environmental problems that we've never seen before. In the case of a vegetarian zombie outbreak, these zombies will not be groaning for brains, but for grains. In all seriousness, this will completely change your zombie apocalypse strategy from hiding out in remote forests to hiding out into urban areas or in deserts. Preparing for an outbreak of vegetarian zombies means that you should really stock up on canned vegetables, corn, fruits, and build strong fortifications around your crops. Number 6. Space Zombies there has been evidence to suggest that asteroids or meteorites could contain microbiological organisms, and in this case, you really have to consider the possibility of something like this falling to Earth and infecting humans. The US government has even been known to quarantine astronauts who visited the moon for this very reason. We also know that without a shadow of a doubt that viruses and microorganisms can survive in harsh conditions long enough to get a ride from a meteorite and down to Earth. The U.S. Strategic Command describes space zombies as zombie life forms originating from space or created by toxic contamination of the Earth's environment from some form of extraterrestrial toxin or radiation. Who knows what kind of things might fall from space, but what if, somehow, it was able to start the zombie apocalypse? It might really sound like complete science fiction, but astronomers have published papers on the possibility. If aliens decided to one day invade planet Earth, what if they send some type of toxin from space to turn us all into mindless, controllable zombies first in order to turn us all into slaves? Who knows what kind of viruses could exist on an alien planet, let alone on planet Earth? It might even be able to transform people into alien-like creatures. This one is quite unpredictable, but we imagine there being a ground zero of contamination where the meteorite struck or where the original zombies began mutating. It would be key to stay as far away from this area as possible and hide out underground. Number 5. Symbiote-Induced Zombies There are quite a few symbiote-induced zombies with other organisms in nature, and we can't exclude humans from becoming one in the future. Some people are even considering the possibility that people with schizophrenia might be slightly infected with some type of brain parasite. According to the U.S. Strategic Command, symbiote-induced zombies are caused from any life form that's able to find their way into a healthy host and then control them. Although this sounds similar to pathogenic zombies, the symbiote zombie will not die from the infection itself for a longer period of time, or the parasite might even choose to keep the host alive the whole time. However, the parasite will severely alter their appearance or behavior, which could be quite zombie-like. This has been known to happen to crabs quite often. A parasitic barnacle called the Sacculina invades the crab through a chink in its armor and seeps in through its surface. Once it's inside the crab, it takes full control and, in theory, turns the crab into a zombie. The female parasite then creates a hole to allow her friends to come join the party. Once it lays its eggs, the Sacculina alters the crab's behavior so it will care for her eggs as if it was its own. If this wasn't bad enough, she renders the crab completely infertile and it also loses all of its desire to mate. In the end, the crab is basically a robot incapable of making its own decisions and spends time nursing eggs that aren't its own. What if some type of parasite was able to control humans in a sense by attaching them to certain parts of the brain, such as the ones that control emotion, pain, and the one that keeps us from becoming face-eating cannibals? Number 4. Weaponized Zombies 
As long as humans live on the same Earth, they'll usually keep on coming up with creative ways to cause destruction upon each other. This is why weaponized zombies are certainly a possibility as well. These zombies are bio or biomechanically engineered for the purposes of reducing the population of Earth and deployed as weapons, kind of like in the movie called The Crazies. In this movie, the weaponized zombies still understand how to use weapons, but many wouldn't actually consider these to be zombies in a sense. Not only would using a weaponized form of the virus strike an immense amount of fear into the public of a targeted nation, it would also weaken that nation's infrastructure and working class. A weaponized zombie would probably be something that's highly contagious, aggressive, and utterly disfigured. For example, some kind of hybrid virus between rabies and the bubonic plague would result in not only aggressiveness, but also a high mortality rate to those infected. The Soviet biological weapons programs have not only tested out things like weaponized rabies, but also the bubonic plague, smallpox, anthrax, and even Botox. Some microbiologists claim that all someone would have to do is create an airborne mutation to rabies and we're looking at a full-blown zombie apocalypse. If rabies is able to spread like the flu through the air, it could trigger a global pandemic. However, this kind of hybridization doesn't occur through nature. It would have to be created in a laboratory by some evil genius. Number 3. Evil Magic Zombies Yes, indeed, our government has a plan to fight back against evil magic zombies. They're described as being zombie life forms created from some form of occult experimentation and what others might refer to as evil magic. We understand how ridiculous it might sound, but American Eye knows exactly what they're referring to and is more realistic than you could possibly imagine. No one takes zombies quite as seriously as the Haitians do. While some of us might laugh at the claims of zombies, the Haitians consider the zombies to be very real. Since voodoo is practiced by 80 to 90 percent of Haitians, the belief of zombies is widespread and serious. They believe that the ones who die from unnatural deaths are much more likely to be vulnerable to witchcraft and even resurrection. Curses put on by Haitian sorcerers can supposedly make those who are still living into wandering zombies like in this photo. Many traditions and tales tell about zombies coming from Haiti, and maybe they can't all be wrong. The Haitians have become experts in black magic, which has resulted in them experimenting in a wide variety of neurotoxins. There's one case in Haiti where some voodoo practitioners were able to kill, then bring them back to life with different neurotoxins from pufferfish and from toads. The tetrodotoxin would leave people in a near-death-like state, then after a week has gone by, the zombies are given a new substance which allows them to have no will of their own. These would be most likely your traditional walker-type zombies and follow the orders of the wizard master. Many are quick to doubt that any of this is possible, but among the Haitian culture, it's all too real. There's even an official law in Haiti that says that you can't give people this zombie drug. Number 2. Chicken Zombies Although this might sound unbelievable, it apparently is the only form of proven zombies that actually exists. So far, the government has confirmed that chicken zombies do exist and they're quite terrifying. These are basically chickens who are euthanized when they can no longer produce eggs via carbon monoxide poisoning. They are put into a giant compost pit after the farmers have done their dirty work. Many chickens are left to decompose. Some might be dead, others might be nearly dead but not quite. According to farmers, the hens appear to be completely lifeless for a long period of time and then they inexplicably come back to life before dying due to organ failure. This whole process might be so terrifying that you actually convert to vegetarianism for your entire life. Chickens also seem to run around for a long period of time without their heads as well. Chicken zombies certainly aren't a threat to humans by any means, but this strange phenomena has certainly made people ponder the possibility that life can be resurrected for at least a short period of time. And number one, Resident Evil Zombies. So what if not just humans are affected by the virus, but also plants and animals too? In the movie Resident Evil, the zombies were created accidentally by the T-Virus, which was created by the Umbrella Corporation. 
Maybe viruses will be able to spread from humans to animals like we've seen with different diseases such as mad cow disease or the bird flu. If this is the case, wild monkey zombies could attack you and turn you into a zombie. You'd have to be extremely careful about what you can eat, what animals to pet, since pretty much all of our food is either plants or animals. If crazy dogs are able to catch a Resident Evil type virus, you may not want to play fetch with them. Hopefully they won't obtain the super mutant strength that we're worried about. After studying this list of different possible types of zombies, hopefully it will help you prepare for the zombie apocalypse correctly. Thanks for watching and be sure to hit that subscribe button for new videos every day.